I'm Benjamin Finneran, Machine Learning Team Lead at Neuromagic. Here at Neuromagic, we're constantly developing new, sparsified performant models and open sourcing them through the Spar Zoo. In this video, I'll be introducing sparse transfer learning, a method for leveraging ours or other existing sparsified models to efficiently create new sparse models fine-tuned to your data sets and problems. Let's break down sparse transfer learning. First, transfer learning is a technique that involves retraining a pre-trained model to learn a new task with the benefit of starting from the pre-trained model's already learned behavior. Take this example network trained on dataset A. If we want to create a new network trained for a different dataset, B, we can use transfer learning to take advantage of the information already learned by the network in dataset A and fine tune the network for dataset B. One way that weights may be updated in transfer learning is by linear probing, where only the final linear layer of weights are updated to learn inferences for the new dataset while sharing the same features extracted from the base model. Another way is through fine tuning, where the entire model weights are allowed to update, keeping the same architecture and starting from the trained base model, but now updating the entire model to learn the new dataset. Sparse transfer learning takes this a step further by starting from a pre-trained sparse network instead of a dense model. By doing so, we're able to take advantage of both the pre-trained weights and the existing sparse architecture of the prune based model. Now, when we run sparse transfer learning, we only allow the non-prune parameters to update, preserving the learned sparse architecture while learning our new task. This process allows engineers and researchers to create sparsified optimizations for one model, then easily apply them to accelerate many tasks without needing to perform additional sparsification hyperparameter tuning against a particular model architecture. After a few epochs of the initial sparse transfer learning, quantization, another sparse optimization, is usually applied through quantization-aware training. Quantization-aware training helps adjust the model trained with 32-bit floating point parameters to run with just 8-bit integers. This leads to a 4x reduction in model size, as well as significant speedups during inference time on top of the existing speedups from the sparse model. We use a non-quantized checkpoint as a starting point for sparse transfer learning because the quantization-aware training process learns parameters that are very specific to the distribution of the target data set, so quantization should only be applied after a 32-bit model has converged to the target data set. One technique that is frequently used to boost results during sparse transfer learning and sparsification in general is distillation. Distillation uses a baseline model, often dense, to teach the model being trained to mimic its outputs. This is done by adding an additional term to the target loss function that compares the divergence outputs between the teacher model and the model being trained. Putting this all together, we have a robust process for training sparse models for new tasks that takes less time and requires significantly less hyperparameter tuning than sparsifying those models to new tasks from scratch. Let's work on an example now of sparse transfer learning using tools open source in our SparseML Python package. For this example, we'll be sparse transfer learning a text sentiment analysis model on the SST2 dataset from a baseline sparse to Stilbert model and a dense BERT teacher model. You can follow along with these commands on the screen or use this tutorial to copy these commands as we go. To sparsify transformer models with SparseML, we need to install SparseML in PyTorch. We can do this simply by running pip install sparseml bracket torch in our terminal. I'm using a new virtual environment with Python 3.8 installed. Before we can sparse transfer learn the model, we will need to create a dense teacher model fine tuned on the SST2 dataset. We can then use the sparseml.transformers.text classification script installed with sparseml with the following command to transfer a dense upstream BERT model to our SST2 dataset. This command uses a simple recipe to run fine tuning for a couple epochs on the model. After the command completes, the trained model will be around 92.7% accurate on SST2 and stored in the local models slash teacher directory. To use your own dataset, pass in the appropriate text files for the train file and validation file CLI arguments. With the teacher model trained, it is then ready to distill into the sparsified student model. The sparse zoo contains many different sparsified NLP models ready for sparse transfer. 
A sparsified distillbar model and sparse transfer recipe are used for this example. We again use the SparseML Transformers text classification script to now run the transfer learning. This time, we use the SST2 model we just trained as a teacher, a sparse distillbar model as the baseline for transfer, and a sparse transfer recipe from the sparse zoo. After the command completes, the trained model will be around 90.5% accurate against the SST2 dataset and will be stored in the local model slash sparsify directory. Again, to utilize your own dataset, just pass in the appropriate text files for the train file and validation file arguments. With the sparsify model successfully trained, it's time to export it for inference. The sparseml.transformers.export onyx command is used to export the training graph to a performant inference one. After the command completes, a model.onyx file is created in the models slash sparsified folder. It's now ready for deployment with the Deep Sparse engine utilizing its deployment pipelines. To learn more about deploying sparsified models with the Deep Sparse engine, see our resources listed below in the description. So that's a brief introduction to sparse transfer learning. There's a lot more to dive into, so check out our other tutorials, integrations, and papers. Feel free to get in touch with any questions or requests by joining us on GitHub or in our open community Slack channel. Thanks for joining me today.